Greetings, royal family. Welcome back. So now it's time for Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 4. This is Episode 8. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Royal B. We're the royal family over here. And if you are a returning royal family member, how you doing? All right. So Bobby Lights is trying to possibly reconnect with his father who's been locked up since he was seven. Bobby Lights is what, 30, 31? <laughs> a mess. I'm going to share my thoughts on that. Suki Hana and her boyfriend, they're broken up now in real time. But seeing this was a hot mess. Them being counseled by Passa. A mess, okay? I was so happy, so happy that Ace Hood's mother was not in this episode. Episode was great. All right, so first, let's start out with Suki Hana, okay? So she's basically facing jail time for putting her hands on a chick, you know, hood-ish. Uh, she wants to go to counseling with her man, and she wants to enlist the help of a passer. So that's later on down in the episode. Trick Daddy. Now, we see him in the studio with his son. His son wants to be a rapper. Lord have mercy. Another rapper. Uh, whatever. So Trick says that he's not, you know, invested a dime in uh, his son's career, rap career, until he proves that this is what he really wants to do. So they called Nori. He enters the studio. You know, Trick wants Nori to listen to his son rapping. And Nori said specifically that he does not want his children to be rappers. He said he told his sons, his kids, you could be anything you want except for a rapper. Now, I wonder why. Hmm. Anyway, uh, Nori ends up talking about missing out on his kid's life over the past six years. And he says that he wants his wife to have another baby. He's telling Trick Daddy this. And even Trick Daddy's taking it back. Like, you want another kid? Uh, what this translates to me is that he wants to ensure that his wife stays on lockdown. Okay? Especially because their children are older now. So it's kind of like resetting the clock. Now that the kids are older, they're a lot more independent. So the wife can go and do what she wants to do. So Nori's like, uh-uh, I'm going to trap her all over again by having another kid. That, that's all it is. These antiquated ways and, oh, he's old school. It's an excuse for him to basically keep a leash on his wife. That's it. That's all. Um... We shift gears and we see Trina. She ends up passing out in the elevator. She's doing a lot of working and traveling. Uh, now, this was one week prior to the versus battle that she did with Eve. So she did mention that, you know, she has a versus coming up in this particular episode. What's wrong with Trina? Only Lord knows. She's okay, obviously, because she was presenting at the BET Hip Hop Awards. So she all right. Anyway, moving on to Ace and Sheila, my favorite couple. So Sheila, she's back from her little childish break. You know, she went to Orlando to an amusement park and she was posting thirst trap pictures on social media so that her husband can see and let him know that she is not to be played with. You know, it was real cute and innocent. So now it's time for she and Ace to sit down and have a talk, right? Now, Sheila, she said that when the cameras are on, um, that Ace turns into Ace Hood. But when they're off, he's Antoine, the man she married. No, Sheila, girl. Now, I've been riding with you, okay, so far this whole season, but he was Ace Hood and Antoine before you married him, sis. So, I mean, I understand what she was trying to say, but I was just like, uh -uh, don't do that, don't do that. Um, Ace may not show that he cares at times. Sometimes he, Sheila thinks that he doesn't care. I think sometimes he just doesn't know what to say in the moment. It seems like she wants him to kind of respond and be attentive to her right then and there. Whereas he has to process things. Uh, so it can come across as if he doesn't care, but he communicates very well with Sheila. I have to say that's that's why I like seeing them work out their issues. You know, she's very understanding. It could all be for the cameras. I hope not, but it could be. They work. You know, they both work. They really do. And they both want to be married to each other. They want to be together. So I think that they take the necessary steps to do what needs to be done. I just, I love the way that they communicate with each other. You know, I, I really, really do. Um... And I love it. I'm just looking forward to their relationship just getting stronger and stronger. And hopefully Ace can get his music career on track where he wants it to be. He's trying to go the independent route. So hopefully this will open up doors for him in that aspect. So 
I want to see them win for sure. Shifting gears to Nori and his wife, Neri. So her, they're sitting down talking. She's saying that her juice bar is almost done. And he tried to hit her with the, you know, I think we should have another baby, you know, because your biological clock is ticking. All I could do is just shake my head in disgust. You know, what, what does she find attractive about that? He tries to really hit her with that, you know, your biological clock is ticking. Like he really thought that that would work. So she pulled his card and she told him, the reason why you want me to have another baby is you just want to keep me in the house. I think that he's afraid that if Neri gets a taste of the independent business woman life, she may not want or need him, in my opinion. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. I think that he just wants to keep her barefoot and pregnant. And again, these antiquated ideas are nothing but a mask for his insecurity. That's just my opinion. But what do I know? Moving along, shifting gears to Bobby Lights. Now, Bobby Lights, his father is locked up and has been since Bobby was about seven. And again, I think Bobby is like either 30, 31, 32, something like that. So for a large portion of his life, his father has not been present. He abandoned him and his mother when he was just seven, right? Now, um... His co he spoke with his cousin. He was actually speaking with Joy first and said that he wanted to kind of see about communicating with his father. Uh, and he said he wanted to run it by Trina, but Trina's going through a lot right now. And Trina hates Bobby's side of the family. She hates her father's side of the family. And that's how she's related to Bobby. So apparently Florida was letting out inmates for, you know, nonviolent offenses. So his cousin was telling him, not Joy, but his other cousin was telling him that if he hires a lawyer, his father can possibly get out, right? Now, this cousin of his, his male cousin, is encouraging Bobby to help his father so he'll have quote-unquote closure. The Baby, the only closure that I'm willing to spend money on is one that can be sewn to the top of my head, preferably Brazilian wavy. You heard me. This closure word is so misused, overused, and abused, and I, I, I can't. I can't. But I can't tell anyone what closure looks like. I can't, right? I really do feel bad for Bobby watching this and in this scene because he's the he says he's the breadwinner in his family, and he's taking care of his mama, right? And I just feel like people trying to pressure him or guilt him using the word closure, it's really annoying. Bobby doesn't owe his father anything. He doesn't owe his father a thing. Look at Amara. She helped her father, right, who has never been there for her. And as soon as he got back on his feet, he's ready to go back to the DR, right? So I just feel like Bobby should be very careful. And I just, I, I hate to see that family is pressuring him and closure this. This man has been absent from Bobby's life since he was seven. And he's been in and out of jail. But when he wasn't in jail, he didn't do for Bobby and, and Bobby's mom. You know what I'm saying? And Bobby started crying. He got emotional. And he said he feels conflicted because it's like you made life so hard for me and my mother. This is what he's telling his cousin. And the cousin is just like, oh, well, you need to do this for closure. I don't need to spend my money for, like I said, the only closure that I want to spend my money on is Whichever one you could kind of like, you know, shellac or sew down to my frontal or my head. No, I don't. I don't agree. So, again, like I was saying before, Bobby, you know, he doesn't want to bother Trina with this because she doesn't like her father's side of the family. So that's how he and Trina are related. Um, I feel like Bobby should help his father only if he wants to. And he should have zero expectations. This is what I would tell him. I would keep it a buck. Look, if you want to help your father... I'll support you. If you don't want to help your father, I'll support you. But you should do it only if you want to and do not have any expectations, right? I just, again, I don't feel that he should be guilted or, or pressured at all. It's his money, his life, his choice. He doesn't owe his father anything. So Bobby goes on to say that his aunt, which is his father's uh, sister, has been holding on to a letter from his father so he plans on reading it the letter is about four months old and my thing when I heard this I said to myself yeah Bobby's father probably has been communicating you know with his family specifically his sister who's Bobby's aunt and the, they probably told him that you know Bobby is famous and he making money and then he re he reached out that's just my opinion I, I could be wrong I could be totally wrong Let's shift gears, okay? Nori. So he's chilling with his boys. They're whiskey tasting. 
And Little C's from the group Junior Mafia, he's in attendance as well. So they're all sitting around tasting whiskey. And Nor Nori basically wants to have another child, like I said. And I think that he wants to do so to ease the guilt that he has because he didn't spend enough time with his current children when they were younger. And I just think that that's an effed up mentality. And his boys are just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I understand. You understand. You... <laughs> Never mind, child. Um, the interesting part of this scene, though, I did have to jot this down, is that they, you know, they play music when they're shifting between scenes. And I could not believe that they played Nas featuring Amy Winehouse, Cherry Wine. Y'all got to check that song. It's a it's an old song, older song, and it's an underrated song. I was shocked. I said, is that Nas and Amy Winehouse? Oh. That immediately put me in a good mood. I love Nazir. Anyway, so I just feel like as grown as Nori is, um, he needs too much attention for me. And if you guys are watching Marriage Boot Camp, the hip hop edition, the current season, episode two just premiered recently. And Neri basically kind of alludes to that. Like she just, Nori has to have all the attention. The, girl, that's too much. Like you're, I, I get it. You being affectionate. And being attentive to your spouse. But if you need as much attention as a child does, that's a turn off for me. Okay. He just needs too, too much attention. Um, what else annoyed me in that scene? It's something else that I'm forgetting. Oh, he's, he kept saying things like help out with the kids. He said, I got to help out with the kids more, you know, help. They're your children. It's called raising your children, not helping out. You're their father, not their babysitter, you McDummy. So Nori was really getting on my nerves. He really, mm. then his friend, big man next to him, or I call him Big Chop, next to him was asking Nori if he could give up drinking. Nori said, yeah, his friends laugh. So that tells you all you need to know. All right, let's shift gears to Miss Suki and her man. This was a hot mess and I felt bad for laughing but I couldn't help it so pastor is helping them counseling them this was a mess okay so Bill is Suki's man Bill says that he loves Suki's gentleness and Suki reminds Bill that he just called her a hoe in the car right because they were arguing episode before last she told him to get out the car and he, you know, he called her all types of holes and stuff. And then pastor says, a what? And I'm saying to myself, pastor, you know what a hoe is. <laughs> a Mary Magdalene, a Jezebel. Don't try to act like you don't know what a hoe is. <laughs> I was laughing this whole scene. It's a mess. Then Suki, she ended up referring to the pastor as your honor. So Bill attempts to correct her. And she says, I can refer to him as whatever I want to refer to him as. She starts telling Bill's business. She tells Pastor that Bill be in the massage parlor. <laughs> Pastor says, uh-uh, come out of there. You can't be doing that. <laughs> I immediately, immediately say, why, Pastor? You afraid that you might get spotted in there? <laughs> Suki starts to get vulgar. Pastor says that he needs holy water. Then Suki, she ends up telling the Pastor that Bill doesn't even pray over his food. And she taught him how to pray. It was a mess. Suki pointed out that, you know, uh, the women in her family don't let men run over them. And then pastor pissed me off. You know, pastor says that's bitterness. So you mean to tell me all this ish that they both sat and said, and you point out Suki is bitter. I know you profit lion. Be quiet. She probably is, but that's, that's the big issue here. They both were going back and forth and you now all of a sudden you a psychologist Anyway, so Suki said that she never wanted to get married to Bill. Now, this one hurt my feelings, right? Um, and I feel like, why did you say yes when he proposed to you? And why are you sitting in Pastor Prophelai's house? If you never wanted to get married to him, what are you even going to counseling for? Suki might have just been saying that because she was on the defense, or maybe that's really how she feels. And if you watch the show, then you could see Bill's body language. He was sitting down, but he was hunched over with his, you know, his arms in his lap and looking down like, yikes. Neither one of them need to get married. They're not together now because there was some scandal or 
there was some drama with them. He put her on social media. I, I tried to follow the story, but I lost interest. But they're not together now, I don't think. I don't know if they're messing around or if they're trying to reconcile. But as far as I know, they've broken up. All right, let's move along to this letter, okay? I wish I had a picture of Bobby Lights. I don't. What a shame. Um, so let's move it on to this letter. Move on to this letter because I, 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 I couldn't. I said to myself, this is so sad and this is a shame. So the part of the letter he's he's at his aunt's house he hasn't seen his aunt in a while that cousin is there with him as well and bobby is reading the letter in front of his aunt so one part of the letter says i need to know that you love me or should i just drop out of your life please respond and i said to myself how dare this human being make this about him straight trash and i don't like to call people trash i more so call their behavior trash but that was straight trash and he also told him that, you know, you don't have to hide anything from me. I'm assuming that probably the family done told him that Bobby Lights is gay. And Bobby said that he's never come out to his father because he never felt comfortable. Duh, you 31 years old and you had this man left when you were seven. He's a stranger to you. He doesn't know you. You don't know him. I mean, and that's perfectly fine because guess what? It's not your fault that he's a stranger to you. He's a man. He's the adult. He's the, he's the parent. He, it should be his duty to make sure that y'all have a relationship. What could you do as an eight-year-old to facilitate a relationship with your father who's a grown man? And then when he said, I need to know that you love me or should I just drop out of your life? Please respond. What a coward. Don't put everything on him. If you are interested in making amends and being in your son's life, it should be solely about your son, not about what you want, how you felt, and I this and I that. It is so annoying. Grow up. Grow up. And his aunt, listen, I don't mean no disrespect, but his aunt, this is why it is important if you have trauma like this, Anybody that is experiencing this, this is my professional opinion. Sometimes with certain things, you cannot seek advice from your family members who have their own trauma. Professional help is most important. I do not agree with anybody guilting and forcing Bobby subtly or strongly to have a relationship with his father. That guilt trip foolishness is so toxic. Oh, you know, uh, you don't want anything to happen to your father and he in there, you know, and you didn't get a chance to reconcile. Bobby is not the one that dismantled and abandoned the relationship. So he should not be responsible for mending and building the relationship. In my opinion, he didn't dismantle it. And in the event, I can't tell Bobby how to feel, but I don't feel that he should be guilted in that manner to have a relationship with his father. God forbid if something was to happen to his father in or outside of jail, that doesn't have anything to do with Bobby. Meaning, meaning, I don't think that, oh, well, I should have done this or I should have done that. That is a huge burden to put on somebody who was abandoned by their father. I just said to myself, Bobby, you should have read that letter by yourself. And if anything, you're looking for closure. I think that you should seek professional help. You're angry and he has every right to be. He's hurt. He has every right to be. And he has been abandoned. He's confused. He, everybody watching. Now he has to put, they, they expected him to put up money to get his father when all these years you've been ripping and running and now you want somebody else to help you and pay for your mistakes, I, I, that's a too much pressure to put on that boy. Absolutely not. I, absolutely not. Um, none of the, none, nothing that they showed in the letter or he read in the letter, I'm pretty sure they edited some things out, but from what they, sh they uh, showed Bobby reading, no accountability in anything. Again, they could have edited those parts out, but I'm only critiquing what was shown. No accountability. Again, Bobby doesn't owe his father anything. Um, 
And I feel like if Bobby wants to give his father an opportunity, it should solely be his choice. It should solely be his choice and not because anybody pressured him. His sister want his her, her brother to come out of jail, of course. And if Bobby is the means to which her brother can come out of jail, of course she's going to coddle and stroke his ego and try to guilt trip him. That's toxic as hell. But what do I know? Oh, 20 minutes. All right, royal family. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. Drop down in the comments. Let me know if you saw this episode. Share your thoughts. Like the video if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed, you can click on my face on the right. Or if you just want to watch another video, you can click on the video on the left. All right. Love you for watching. And as always, until next time, peace.